In the previous video, we saw what kind of error function we should use for multi-label classification. In this video, we're going to do a forward pass in our neural network and see how it works. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Done. So let's say we have this neural network. It has two neurons on the output and we have sigmoid units. One input data comes in and the, the job is to actually do multi-label classification, right? So again, you know, here in this, in this neural network, we've got connections here. So, you know, we've got weights around here. I mean, so many weights, right? So um, the input data comes in, here's my input data, and it belongs to say, uh, both class one and class two, right? And that is why we have uh, one here and one here in my ground truth vector because we believe that it belongs to both classes. Now, let's say we have sigmoid function here in the output neurons, and the sigmoid function looks like this. It's exactly what it looks like, right? This is the sigmoid function, and this is the formula for a sigmoid function. And it's also called a, what is it, a crusher, sometimes they call it. <clears throat> and it's because Whatever the, the value of the input is, from minus infinity to plus infinity, doesn't matter. It always crushes the thing between 0 and 1, right? So if you look at uh, the range, it's always between 0, that is here, all the way to 1. So this is where it plateaus to 1. So, and uh, when the input is really small, it plateaus around 0. Because of that, the output of neuron is always bounded between 0 and 1, okay? And that makes it ideal for our multi-label classification. Now, and that is, this is our formula, right? 1 divided, divided by 1 plus e to the power minus zi, which is the input of sigmoid. Basically, this is uh, zi, the horizontal axis. And this is the vertical axis, my sigmoid, right? Now, um, let's say, let's say... Uh, we have the input data comes in so many mathematical stuff happen in here in the middle right and then eventually I end up with two pre-activations for these two neurons right so let's call this uh, z1 let's say this is point one let's say and let's say z2 is 10 right I want to show you how forward pass works. Now, in order to show you that, I'd like to do a little bit of programming, which could make our experience a little bit more, you know, interesting. Now, I want to do a little bit of programming here. So let's say I'm going, I'm going to get into Python. I want to import NumPy. So let's just import NumPy as NP and then import math. <coughs> I want to define a function that can compute sigmoid, right? I want to show you sigmoid in action. So def, let's call it sig of z. And let's say this, I'm going to return the output of this, which is uh, 1 divided by, say, 1 plus, so look at the formula, right? 1 plus math.exp, which is Euler number, Euler's number minus that input. So here the input is z, right? <coughs> Actually, I had to indent this. Great. So I have the sigmoid function, right? Let me just show you what it means to say it crushes stuff. So sigmoid of a, va a value equal to zero is 0.5. And that makes sense, right? Because with sigmoid, when your input is somewhere around here, around zero, the output is nearly 0.5 here. So that makes sense, okay? Um, and let's say the input is very large, say 100. The output is one. And let's say it's very small, minus 100. The output is very, very small, 10 to the power minus 44, right? So it's always between zero and one. I just want to prove, prove, prove you that. Now, let's do forward pass together, right? Let's predict these, uh, generate the prediction vector. So when z is equal to 0 0.1, what would be the sigmoid of 0 0.1? Uh, 0 0.1 is uh, 0.52. And when z is 10, which is our z2, the sigmoid is 0.99, right? So let's just write this down. Now, before we compute the error, 
So now we have predicted our y hats, right? So that's the forward pass, forward pass is done. But let's compute the error. Before we even start talking about binary cross entropy that we discussed last meet, uh, the last uh, video, you notice that the difference between these two is much more than the difference between these two. So it means that the network has done a decent job in figuring out that this input data belongs to the second class, so fair play. It has done a good job, but here, not that good, right? Not that good. So already you know you will get, you should get error values uh, that are low in this chunk and for this element, but, and, but they're higher for this chunk, right? Now, <clears throat> this is the binary cross entropy function that we discussed we should use for our, you know, for multi-label classification. Um, so, you get your ground truth, right? So this is my ground truth. This is my prediction. And I is basically the first element or the second element or the third element. And this basically, you, uh, you have minus, minus your ground truth times the natural log of your prediction, its corresponding prediction, minus here again, one minus the same ground truth times the natural log of one minus the corresponding prediction. Now, let's see what it actually means, okay? So let's, in order to be able to actually compute the error, very unplugged and very, you know, raw. <laughs> uh, so let's define a, an error function. Let's call it BCE, binary cross entropy. Let's say it gets Y and it gets Y hat, right? Y and Y hat, indent. Now let's say we return the error. Now I'm going to implement this whole formula. So it becomes minus y times natural log. The way you implement natural log is like this with numpy. numpy.log, it is natural log. Uh, your y hat, next, minus 1 minus y, again, times the natural log of 1 minus your y hat. Let me just check it one more time. So I had one minus y, one y hat, yeah, minus, okay, good, yeah. So this is my binary cross entropy function. Now let's use this and compute the errors, right? Let me make it smaller a little bit. Right, so the BCE of the first, the first term, right? We have the ground truth of one, but we have the prediction of 52. So that gives me an error of 0.65. Now, let's look at the second case where the ground truth is 1, but the prediction is 99. You expect to have a lower error, and you do have a much, much lower error, right? So let me just uh, transfer these values so we can follow exactly what, what uh, is happening. Now, the, the last step is that we will sum these together, and this becomes the error. Right? So if you sum these together, your error for, uh, for this particular input data, for one input data, you're, you can sum them up, you can, you, know, you, can, uh, you can average them, there are different ways that you can do this. Now let's just say we sum, sum it up, just for simplicity here, 5 plus 1, 6, again 6, and then 0. 0.0. Right? So this error corresponds to this input data. That's it. Okay, that's it. Now you know about forward pass and multi-label classification and how to compute your binary cross entropy for multi-label classification. In the next video, we will do the backdrop of this very network. Thank you.